Hello, all my lovely people, and welcome to your Virgo New Moon reading. The Virgo New Moon is coming up on September 6th, and it's going to be climaxing around 6.51 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So wherever you're at in the world, you can adjust that. Um, but I love the Virgo New Moon. It is a call to reflect. So where are you right now? You know, where do you want to go now? You know, what have you realized about your goal or your goals since the last full moon in Virgo, um, which this year was on February 27th of 2001? You know, there's a, like a six month ish cycle between, you know, you have a new moon in Virgo and then you go up to the full moon in Virgo and then you go back to the new moon in Virgo. And it's this beautiful process of planting new seeds. Um, them growing, you come into this place of harvest, and then as you go back to the new moon, looking at what you're ready to let go of and what you're ready to change. So you can ask yourself, you know, what are you, what um, have you been letting go since the last full moon? And really, now with it being a new moon, it's a great time for a clever, simple, well organized, you know, restart. So um, you can consider perhaps focusing on what you can give to others um, as you plant these new seeds going forward. And Virgos, of course, have a strong health aspect as well. So you might um, also reflect on what you can give to your body. And that can be your, you know, looking at what you want to seeds you want to plant um, until the next full moon in Virgo. So I am doing, uh, of course, a reading for each individual zodiac sign. So whichever um, signs you want to look at, your sun sign, your moon sign, um, you know, your rising sign, your Venus, whatever you want to focus in on, um, you know, uh, look at a variety of them if you'd like to get a full picture of what this new moon energy is bringing in for you. And we'll go ahead and jump into the reading right now. All right, my Capricorns, this is your Virgo New Moon reading. And since this was a call to reflect, um, I'm going to pull a card here first from Empowering Questions. And um, this is going to just represent what the creator um, recommends um, just to ponder, to question for this period, if you would like to. And it's going to basically represent for this three week period. So the week before the new moon up to two weeks after, you know, up to the next full moon. And so we're just going to ask the creator for all our Capricorns. What question would you like them to consider during this time? And you got how would I want to be encouraged right now? What would I want to hear? And that is a beautiful question to ask and ponder. Um, because it really gets to the root here. I was just thinking red, because red uh, is the root chakra. It really gets to the fear of um, where do you feel you're not worthy? Where do you feel you're not capable? You know, so what you're needing to hear um, is showing you this belief that you have within yourself about what you need. Because, you know, when we need to hear, like, you're smart enough, or you're healthy enough, or you're um, uh, capable enough, you're worthy enough, you know, you deserve that. You know, it's um, those types of encouragements that when we're trying to hear them on the outside, where we really need to hear them is from the inside, right? And so these are beautiful questions to ask, where do you feel you need encouragement? Okay, we're also gonna pull cards here from this enchanted uh, map deck, and we're gonna pull three cards, one representing what the creator wants you to know about the week before the new moon, and then one for the week after the new moon, and then one for the second week after the new moon. So let's give these a shuffle. And we will see what the creator wants you to know. It's a beautiful thing, and it's not to, you know, go, look, your weakness, <laughs> you know. It's like the first piece to overcoming something or transforming something, and is the awareness of it, right? And so that's why it's coming up for you. 
and you never have to do anything you don't want to do. So if you're like, hell no, I don't want to do that, then you don't have to. You can think of your own question to ponder. That's the beauty of this life. The Creator doesn't try to, um, in, you know, mess with our free will. It just, um, if you're seeing this, then you're calling out for answers, and that's why the answer is coming for you through the reading, right? All right, Creator. So for the first week, what do you want our Capricorns to know about that week before the new moon? Okay. They are wanting that one. And then the week after the new moon. Nope, none of those. Okay. Okay, that one. And then the second week after the new moon. Okay. There we go. So the week before the new moon, you have encouragement. <laughs> Uh, oh, hilarious. So, how would you like to be encouraged? Well, here you go. You got encouragement. <laughs> and I love this because for me, this is like the creator, you know, and this is the small us, and it's, you know, the um, creator bringing the encouragement to us. And sometimes also, you know, this is our higher self, our soul, our spirit that's bringing that. When I said you need to find it from within, you know, we can find that through our higher self because our higher self is a powerful, supernatural, eternal spirit being made of unconditional love. What we're really looking for is always love and support. And that's what encouragement means is um, showing us how we're worthy, um, that we're lovable, you know, because of all that. Um, so I love that. <laughs> you just can't make it up. <laughs> Hilarious. And then let's see what message comes with that card here. You are receiving a nudge in the right direction. So this card tells you that you're being greatly encouraged to step into your power, into the dream of your life. New things are out there to be explored. And the nurturing power of the universe is giving you a nudge in the right direction. You will get the help you need and won't be alone in your quest. Every step you take right now is supported by the wisdom of the universe. You're on the right path. Keep going. So that's the encouragement. That must have been the encouragement that you're looking for. You're on the right path. Keep going. Ra ra ra. Whoop whoop whoop. <laughs> it just it just cracks me up. I love it when synchronicities happen. It's just beautiful. Um, and then the week after the new moon, you've got slow and steady number 12 which makes sense we'll read from the book but you know it's like just keep going you don't have to sprint to the end just keep going you know take um, things a step at a time um don't you know on a on a journey of a thousand steps um focus on the very next step not the remaining 999 right because you don't have enough energy for all a thousand um, you have enough energy for this step. And when you go to the next step, you have enough energy for that. But if you try to split one step's energy into a thousand, it's very, you won't have enough. It'd be very, very tiny. It'll be one one thousandth of what you need, <laughs> literally. <clears throat> so slow and steady wins the race, of course. And it says, remember the old cliche. And this is the time for easy movement, unhurried steps, and a steady heart. Trust that taking life at a more leisurely pace will give you the greater access to your dreams that this was talking about. Slowing down allows more contact with the juicier elements of life. Savor them. Yes, I love that. So taking a step at a time. And this does break down, uh, 12 breaks down to number three, which is a number of creativity too. And so when you're trying to rush to get to the end of something, um, you don't really take the time to put yourself into that step, right? You're just like, just get through that step. I don't care what it looks like. And it's like, well, it's, you know, the end result isn't what our life's about anyway. You know, they always say, it's the journey. And everyone goes, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, when you look at it, when you get to the end of that, journey there's just another journey and there's just another journey and there's just another journey and it actually is just this loop you know it's like this enjoy the walk around the lake because if you sprint 
<laughs> you're just going to sprint around another one. But if you're walking and enjoying the scene and, and just in, um, embracing life, it's just a much more peaceful and enjoyable experience. Because when you're rushing, you, you also miss red flags and signs that say dead end. <laughs> And you're like, oh man, I went down the wrong street. You're like, oh, if you read the street sign, slow down, you would have you would have uh, saved yourself some time anyway. Um, and so you get to enjoy a leisurely, beautiful, nice week of just being in the moment, slow and easy movement, not feeling freaked out. Yay! And then you move into the second week after the new moon, and you've got intention number twenty-two which is a master number, master builder of your life. And let's take a look here. And you've got, yeah, deliberate, clear intentions have the power to change the world. So your objectives will be fulfilled at this time. Inspired intentions are like magic arrows shot into the sky. The universe is bringing you a gift, showing you that you're hitting your mark. <laughs> so more encouragement, you're on the right path, you're hitting your mark. Recognize that you're not the one who has to do all of the work, however. Others help you co-create reality. You connect to the power of intention, sending it out into the field, then allow for synchronicity to work its magic. Perhaps the good intentions of others will inspire you to send out beautiful ones of your own. Own the life you want to lead and live deliberately with clarity and detachment. So um, that is a, a great message about, you know, with your intentions. Um, and, and that's why you can stay in this slow and steady way too, is if you realize that all of your abundance and everything that's brought to you um, is for you and is brought to you by the Creator. They're the supplier of all things and they have an endless supply. You know, there's never any worry about anything ever wearing out. When we th um, think humans are the ones that bring us our abundance, yeah, we freak out and we because uh, it's unstable and we don't know if there's going to be enough. But when we realize that other people are the middlemen, that they're the shipping company that you know brings um, the abundance to us, then you can rest easy and yeah, you can be like, I am sitting on a big egg and I'm making wishes. You know, the little dandelion, I'm sending out wishes into the field and knowing that the creator. It's going to bring you what is for your highest experience and your highest um, love vibration um, into your life. So I am loving that for you. I'm going to move these up yonder. And what we're going to do is pull some clarifying cards here from these um, Light Sears Tarot. I'm just going to take a quick swig of water here. There we go. <clears throat> go. And um, we're just going to see what the creator wants you to know in addition for each of these weeks. All right, creator, what else do you want? Our Capricorns to know about the week before. Okay, and what about the week after the new moon? Okay, and what about the last week or the second week after the new moon? Okay. All right, so, um, the week before. I love this. This is the Ten of Pentacles, which is about a feeling of abundance, a feeling of wholeness and completeness. Pentacles are about your outside world. So really, um, with this encouragement card coming in, you know, during the first week, you're feeling encouraged, you're feeling blessed, you're feeling supported. Um, and um, you just have this confidence in that the things that you're wanting to fulfill in life 
Um, this is like the legacy cards. It's not only going to benefit you, but it benefits generations to come. And so th with the intentions that you're not just in it for, you, you know, the money for yourself and, and you know, for your glory, but um, in your heart, you're looking and going, okay, this is going to impact others um, for generations. And I love this too, because this is the tree of life here. And um, that reminds me, kind of resonates as the uh, family tree, that this also is about your power um, to break chains um, that have been passed down from generation to generation. So whether that is a belief that's been passed down from generation to generation, or a kind of abuse that's been passed down from generation to generation, or an expectation of working in a particular field, like medical field or military or, you know, police or um, firemen, you know, something along those lines. If any of those things that have been passed down from generation to generation that bring restriction and stagnation to your family tree, this is saying you have the power to break that cycle and you get to be the one. You may not be getting the encouragement from your family um, because you're breaking that chain. Um, and they're like, I can't believe you're not going to be in the family business or whatever, you know, it's not kind of that feel to it. I can't believe you're not going to do that. Um, that you're okay, you're breaking that chain and you're showing that I'm going to be able to do what I'm going to do. And then that in turn helps other people in your family tree and even other people's family trees in the orchard, right? That um, they, you're influenced because your flowers are pollinating their flowers and your energy and your decisions are rippling out and people are going, wow, you're doing that and, and, and that's amazing and I can do that too. And so just know that um, you um, are an encouragement to others as well. Um, and sometimes a beautiful thing about wanting encouragement is if you want encouragement, encourage others. If you want love, love others. If you want support, support others. Um, because what you put out and what energy you invest is what comes back to you as well. And you don't do it because of that. You're like, oh, I want that, so I'm going to do that. It's like, you know what? No, I, I understand what it feels like to receive encouragement. So I'm going to go and encourage others because it's beautiful. It's a wonderful feeling to encourage others. Um, and then you stop focusing on your lack of encouragement because you're focusing on how you're encouraging others. So a little other message there. And then the um, first week after the new moon. Oh, yeah. So you've got the magician who is the, of course, master manifester. So putting things um, into... Um, you know, from dream into reality. And I always love, because um, I think in here it has symbols. Yeah, so it's got all the symbols here of all the suits, all the air, fire, water, um, and earth, which represent the four um, minor arcana. I um, mean, it's basically saying you have all the tools you need in your hands to make your dreams come true. It's just um, channeling um, your higher power, which, um, this infinity symbol represents the infinite you and channeling that power into you have that ability to make things happen and um this card 22 um as well that master number brings in this beautiful message um because i feel like the master number 11 is when we master our ego our human side that fight or flight being um, that came down here that uh, rules itself by all the conditions and the expectations. That's like you, you learn to master that with master number 11, which with coming to master number 22, you have a good understanding of how that works. Master number 22 is when you become aware that you're more than just that human character, that you're this spirit being who, um, you know, powerful, supernatural, eternal spirit being made of unconditional love, that that's the actor behind the character you're playing in, that there's two of you that are on this journey with you going through this life. Um, and with this connecting to that level, um, I really feel like this wishes and intentions and manifestations, you're really understanding this energy um, that comes from above and about um, you're finding that the 
like that magic, the love energy, which is like magic, is inside you. That is what influences how you see the world. Because you don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. And so as you transform and understand these things inside um, and receive your encouragement from inside, from your higher self, <laughs> you know, from your higher self, you really... Um, it just transforms your world. So you see the world in a, a totally different way. A world of possibilities instead of a world of limitations. A world where things are happening for you and not happening to you. Um, and then you move into the second week after the new moon. Yeah, makes sense. Because then here's the page of pentacles. So new opportunities um, unfolding, new things coming your way. And I love this because if you can see on the bottom of his shoe, there's like this... Um, seedling coming out and here's the roots growing out down here below so it's um you know about your the seeds that you planted the seeds that you're doing here um it, they're taking root and they're growing you know and so it's definitely unfolding and um you know it is about unlimited possibilities i usually talk about the page um not only is about a messenger because, you know, back in the day, the, you know, like in a lot of movies you see, like in the old towns, kids, hear ye, hear ye, blah, blah, blah. It's little kids bringing messages. They're the pages. And so this is about messages coming from the outside world. So you might be getting some encouraging messages from the outside world. Um, but also pages, because they're children, it also has this newness where you go back to this place where before you got all the restrictions and all the supposed to be's and the shoulds, you know, when children, when you're young, 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 and you just think everything's possible in the world, right? Um, there's limitless thing. I can do anything. And so this is that um, feeling that you're getting. Um, this is what's coming into you during that, that period of time. And then you have the queen of swords. And so the swords are all about your thoughts, your beliefs, your mentality, your um, mindsets, your attitudes. And so she's contemplating those. Um, the reason why she's the queen and at the end, queen, of course, divine feminine. She also brings in um, love, which this Ace of Cups is about emotions. So she also brings in her emotions and making decisions because one of the lessons the Queen of Swords learns through the process is that decisions made only with the mind don't tend to make you feel happy, you know, don't tend to, don't uh, tend to uh, make you emotionally feel fulfilled because it's logic, you know? Um, and so this is really about um, contemplating your thoughts and beliefs. Um, and usually, I mean, she's holding on to the sword. So she's the ace of swords that she's holding is what you use to cut away old beliefs. Um, those things that no longer serve you, you know, for the path that you want. And she usually has her hand forward, which means she's also open to new thoughts and new beliefs that come in. Um, but, you know, you have the caged heart here, which means also kind of this balance. You don't want to um, make decisions totally emotionally and you don't want to make decisions totally logically. It's this beautiful balance in between. So there's this opportunity for you as things unfold is um, get out of your, if you're totally in your mind, you know, um, which um, you Capricorns, I know we, we can get, I'm Capricorn rising, so I know I can get into my head and get into the, the list of things and everything like that. So sometimes, yeah, I need reminders, get out of my head and get into my heart. But there's also times where, because I have a lot of water energy in my chart, I need to get out of my heart and balance it with, um, you know, also my bring in my mind, not just be totally heart centered. Because um, sometimes emotions, if it's not of unconditional love, can be sporadic and bring a little bit of chaos. So, <laughs> but I'm loving this message for you because it's this beautiful balance, new opportunities. Um, and then also, you know, cutting away things that no longer serve you, taking on new um, beliefs, um, you know, about who you are, um, you know, again, coming back to this, how what I want to be encouraged really shows you 
where you feel you're lacking and where because um, what needs reinforcement is where you have a belief about yourself and that is not one of um, health and and love towards yourself it's a judgment towards yourself normally right and then lastly we're going to pull a couple cards here from this clarity deck which is by girls gone happy i love that word i love that uh, business name i mean um because we are all whether we're a boy or a girl or anything in between whatever we identify with or as we can all be girls gone happy it's my belief and i'm sticking to it <laughs> All right, Crater, for our Capricorns, what else do you have? Okay, what else would you like? Okay, it's just this one here. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to put this right here. And the final two messages that you have, you've got the Rebel. Where are you following roles you don't care about or really believe in anymore? So this is beautiful. This, I think, really goes well with this card. And, you know, what, what are those beliefs about yourself that you don't have to believe anymore, right? And then you've got wandering. What are your feelings, your beliefs, or your stories about the act of aimlessly wandering? How does this give you an important insight into thoughts and patterns that are keeping you stuck? Yeah. So, and, and this is a beautiful um, question for those of us who um, like structure and we like control and we like super organization. Because if you're just going to wander, what's the plan? <laughs> There's no plan. We're going to wander. So the plan is to wander. Oh, <laughs> it's uncomfortable for some of us because we... Well, the, at the root of that, which, you know, recovering control freak, um, is that um, when, we f when we have all these external definitions of who we're supposed to be, you know, um, all these shoulds and woulds and supposed tos and needs tos and have to be's, when we have all that, um, all that is defining who we are. As we're taught to, that that defines who we are and so we take it on um, and we go okay this is how i'm going to judge myself and because there's so many things and so many things are literally out of our control but yet we try to control the entire world because all this stuff has to happen for me to be lovable and acceptable and happy um, and so um, we have to it's like trying to herd cats but we're dang, dang it we're gonna try it anyway you know and so we we do all that and then um we end up being disappointed and we end up being in feeling like we're in chaos and you know it's not this um easy task that we try to do but um eventually when you know like we connect with our higher self like all these were pointing us inward when you find you have everything you need inside you and that you have the power to control what anything means about you. You know, you don't have to take on the outside opinion as what it means. You get to choose for yourself. You don't have to choose the popular emotion, the popular opinion. You get to choose what you want to feel. You get to choose um, what you um, believe about things. And so no matter what comes in your future, you get to decide what it means. And you can choose as an emotion of extreme fear or an emotion of extreme unconditional love or something in between. And you get to choose. And when you have that power, then you feel okay wandering because you're like, oh, I don't care. If I wander, um, you know, it's the unknown that freaks out the control freak. Because <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm going to face. What if I face something I can't control? Well, chances are you're not going to be able to control. But when you understand that you're the choice maker, you know, you're this manifester, this magician that has the magic to choose what anything means about you that happens out in this storm or in this galaxy. Um, then you're okay because whatever comes it doesn't matter i get to choose what it means i could always just default to choose that means i'm loved you know um and um i just had this flash of oh what was the name of the movie did it have magicians in it um 
oh, now you see me. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but in the first one, um, when they first meet, um, one of the guy, he plays a really arrogant magician and someone, uh, you know, makes some sort of snide remark and he goes, I take that as a compliment. And, and the other one's like, well, yeah, you would, but, but, but I also take that as a compliment. And that kind of reminds me, that's our power. We could take everything as an accomplishment. Anything as an encouragement. You know, people are like, um, you're never going to do that. You know what? I take that as a compliment. Thank you. And they're like, what? But you get to choose what it means. So it doesn't matter what they're like. I meant as an insult. That's okay. I'm taking it as a compliment and you can't make me think otherwise, <laughs> you know? So that's kind of power that you have with this wandering. But a beautiful, beautiful message here for you for your new moon phase coming up. And um, just know that as you do go through each and every day, the Creator is very proud of who you are, sees you as perfect, and does love you every second unconditionally. And I love you too. So have an amazing new moon phase, and I'm sure I'll be talking with you very soon. You take care.